Welcome back to Fossil Linux Journal, ladies and gentlemen. The transition from Windows 10 to Linux is gaining traction as users around the world look for alternatives to Microsoft's operating system. This trend is driven by a number of motivations, including the stricter requirements of Windows 11, the display of adverts in Windows 10, and concerns about the increasing integration of cloud service and associated data storage. In view of these circumstances, more and more people are looking around for alternatives and are coming across Linux. If this sounds like you, this video is for you. So let's get it started. An increasing trend to migrate from Windows to Linux is driven by various motivations perceived by users worldwide. Some may feel constrained by the requirements of Windows 11, be it hardware limitations or new license requirements. Others are frustrated by the increasing presence of advertising in Windows 10, which detracts from the user experience and can jeopardize privacy. Additionally, some users feel forced into cloud nodes by the growing integration of cloud services and associated data storage in Microsoft's ecosystem, raising privacy concerns and questioning control over their own data. Given these challenges and the appeal of Linux due to its cost-free nature, customizability, security and independence from big tech companies, more and more users are deciding to take the plunge and switch from Windows 10 to Linux. Sounds good to you? If you're interested in Linux content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and activate the bell to be up to date in the future. Let's take a look at the advantages that switching can bring you. Cost savings. Linux is generally free and open source. Unlike Windows, which requires license fees, you can download and use Linux distributions for free. Of course, the Linux distro projects and therefore the volunteer developers are happy if you drop 5 euros and by that honor their work. But you don't have to do that. I do that. I see it familiar way when I go out to eat. I usually give a tip. Customizability. Linux offers a high degree of customizability and flexibility. There are a variety of Linux distributions, distros for short, that are optimized for different use cases. You can customize and configure your distribution according to your own preferences. There are distros that can be highly customized, while there are also beginner-friendly distros that pick up newcomers directly with familiar desktop concepts. These can even look similar to Windows or Mac OS. Security. Linux is considered to be the more secure operating system compared to Windows, but honestly I don't agree with this across the board. Due to its multi-user model and stricter authorization system, it is less susceptible to malware and security threats. However, the biggest factor for security or insecurity is usually in front of the screen. So never switch off your head, whether it's Windows, Mac OS or Linux. Performance. Linux can often run better on older hardware than Windows 10, let alone Windows 11, as it's more resource efficient. This makes Linux ideal for use on older computers or devices with limited resources. You can use your old computer for more or less as long as you like and avoid unnecessary electronic waste. The Community Linux has a large and active community of users, developers and of course YouTubers. They offer extensive documentation, forums and help pages that can help you solve problems and optimize your system. Especially at the beginning you might find yourself using a search engine like Startpage or Quant to look for a solution to a problem. Here you will quickly end up in a forum or find a YouTube video that solves your problem. I don't want to kid you that you might be looking for a problem. A beginner-friendly Linux distro does not replace you. It makes the steps easier for you. Open Source Philosophy Linux is based on the open source model, which means that the source code is freely available and can be improved by a worldwide community of developers. This encourages innovation and collaboration. But beyond that, it fosters trust and although many will probably never read a line of Linux kernel source code, many just like having that option. The flexibility and myriad of possibilities just make up for it. Resource Management 
Linux offers advanced resource management tools that allow users to utilize memory and processor power more efficiently. Sounds great, right? But in practical terms, this point corresponds with the point just mentioned that resource management often means that all the computers can still be used. And now, ladies and gentlemen, maybe the deal changer comes for you. No forced updates. Unlike Windows, let's say 10, which carries out regular forced updates, Linux gives you full control over update management. You can choose when and how you want to install updates. Of course, you can't delay security updates for months or years. But you can choose when you want to install updates in general. You are not forced to switch to a newer version. Of course, sooner or later you will have to do this, e.g. when a support for a version ends. But you are definitely not forced to do it when, for instance, a vendor wants you to do it. Every coin has two sides, right? And as a serious YouTuber, I don't present you just the nice sounding advantages. I also address potential problems. That's only fair and I owe it to my viewers. So let's take a look at any possible disadvantages. Application support. Although Linux has seen improved application support in recent years, there are still some applications and software that are only available for Windows. This could be a problem if you are depending on certain software. I'm thinking here about tools such as Adobe Creative Suite or the client software of Microsoft Office 365 or SAP GUI. But there are also games that are only available for Windows and not for Linux. So here you should first check what works and what alternatives there may be. Some say for Adobe Photoshop you can use GIMP. Others say for Office 365 you can use LibreOffice or FreeOffice. Others say for SAP GUI you can also use the Web GUI. So there are some alternatives around, but you have to check it in advance. Hardware Whilst Linux offers broad hardware support, it is possible that not all drivers are available for your specific hardware. This can lead to problems with hardware compatibility. In this case, we can refer to more exotic hardware or if there were once very well optimized proprietary drivers for a hardware that may not be supported by the Linux kernel to the same extent. Admittedly, I can think about practical examples here, but it can't be completely ruled out if you are perhaps still using an older handheld scanner or similar. Learning curve Switching from Windows to Linux requires a certain learning curve, especially if you have only ever worked with Windows. There is no way around. Even if some distros even look similar to Windows, not everything that says Windows is Windows. The operation and management of Linux sometimes differ considerably from Windows, which can take time and patience. But don't worry, with a little willingness to learn and a willingness to face smaller challenges, this will quickly become second nature. Documentation Although here is a wealth of documentation and guidelines available for Linux, the ease of use and availability of immediate help may not be as high as with Windows. Just keep in mind, with Windows you can also buy support with certain Windows versions. Some tasks can be more complex and may require technical expertise. Let's not kid ourselves, there are technical it everywhere where have human problems staying nice and friendly. They are everywhere, but also here. Sometimes newcomers are harshly approached with their questions along the lines this has been asked and answered a hundred times before. Yes, that's true. So be respectful of other people's time. Don't make yourself comfortable and just throw out your question without having at least used a forum search or look for a solution yourself via start page or quant. You don't want to take the time to answer the same questions all the time because someone else is just lazy. So always be fair on both sides. Proprietary formats. Linux distributions may not offer full support for certain proprietary file formats or technologies which can lead to compatibility issues. This is a point that has already been discussed in principle in the application support section. It is important to check in advance what you need and what alternatives are available. Customization requirements. Although Linux is customizable, for some users the customization and configuration of the system can be complex and require additional time and resources. 
But even further, if you have previously worked with templates for Microsoft Office under Windows and still need these templates after switching to Linux, you will have to adapt them to another office such as LibreOffice. So it's better to think big and far in advance so that there are no nasty surprises afterwards. You can usually iron out a lot with money or time. But you first have to be able to find both and, if necessary, pull them out at short notice. Overall, the decision to switch from Windows 10 to Linux depends on your needs, requirements and comfort level with Linux. It is important to weight up the pros and cons and possibly have a trial period to decide if Linux is the right choice for you. You can try out Linux for example by installing software such as VirtualBox or using Hyper-V under Windows to install and test Linux as a virtual machine. I switched from Windows XP and Vista to Linux in 2003. Did I regret it? No. Of course, I have to use Windows at work. I don't want to fool anyone. I have no influence over this decision. It's a case of eat or die. But my private life and for my personal business, I don't rely on Windows. Linux rocks and has done so for over 20 years. That should speak for itself. Let me know in the comments what's on your mind. Have you already switched? Then tell others about your impressions. Are you about to switch? then feel free to describe your plans. In the end card I will show you two more suitable videos. One is about tips and tricks I wish I had known when I switched to Linux and the other one is about Linux distros for everyday work, for instance for productive use on a desktop. Feel free to watch them and I'll be back soon for a new video. Thanks for the kind attention ladies and gentlemen. See you next time. Peace.